Today on Locked On Rockies, really it comes down to this. If you walk batters as much as the Rockies do, you are going to lose. The amount of walks the Colorado Rockies are allowing is unacceptable. You are Locked On Rockies, your daily Colorado Rockies podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Rock on Rockies fans, welcome into the Locked on Rockies podcast for today, the 11th day of April in the year 2024. I'm your host of the Locked on Rockies podcast, Paul Holden, bringing you your daily Colorado Rockies talk right here on the Locked on Podcast Network, where you can find your team every day. If your team is the Colorado Rockies, guess what? You're in the right spot because that's what we do around here each and every ball game is bring you your daily Colorado Rockies podcast right here free and streaming on your favorite streaming services and on the Locked On Rockies YouTube channel where you can be part of the show by letting me know what's on your mind. Firing off your Rockies hot takes. Let me know what's on your mind. Just like Rackadori, who says, cut Rogers, cut Bryant, cut Cave, trade Diaz, cut three-fifths of the starting rotation, and cut the bullpen. Only way Rockies ever see above 500 winning percentage. Stop giving Colorado fans delusional hope. It doesn't help. Be realistic and speak on how reality is. I'd like to know the reality of cutting more than half the team in the beginning of April and how that would work financially for the team, but... I have admitted my homerism to you, but I've also I've gotten a little bit of uh, some some stuff of like stop giving false hope, stop giving false hope. I've just told you my thoughts and my perspective of this team is someone that's watched it and and has gone through it. If if barely making it at the best season possible in 2024 is is 70 wins, and that's too much false hope for you, then I, I guess I'm sorry, but I. I'm critical of this team. <laughs> There's no way around it. If if you if you watch the show, you'll you'll learn. And I I, I wasn't I was gonna wait on this, but I'll, I think I will dive into it a little bit. Uh, I got to change my overlay here. I just realized I have the wrong overlay. Let me update that here live on the fly. Um, I, I okay. I'll just I'll just I'll, I'll dive into it. I suppose. Um, before. I do that. I got to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. From brakes to exhaust kits and beyond, eBay Motors has 122 million parts to keep your ride or die alive. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to bring home that big win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. What I was going to say is... You have, I am, I, I, we will be critical of this team. There are things to look at and to point at, and, and, and it's not hard to point out the flaws, the issues, the problems, the shortcomings, the mistakes, the issues with the Colorado Rockies. There are a lot of them. There are a ton of them. There are issues that go from the top down. There are the issues with the players. There are the issues with the coaches. There's the issues with the front office. There are a ton of issues with the Rockies, but I am not going to only always forever and always focus on that stuff. If a pitcher comes out with a quality start, we're going to talk about a quality start from Rockies pitching. If someone like Brenton Doyle is having a surprising start to the season with his offense, we're going to talk about that being a good sign for the Rockies. We're also going to talk about this team completely falling flat on its face in this homestand where they had an opportunity at back-to-back -back sweeps. I mean, you can have the conversation about the Colorado Rockies and and talk about the and talk about the negatives talk about the flaws talk about the issues and continuously bring that stuff up like we do but you can't sit there and ignore the fact that there are positives about the team there are things even in this tough stretch to the start of the season that are encouraging if you're watching Brenton Doyle right now and you say that guy's not figuring it out that guy's not playing well well you're not watching the right things you're not watching the game you're not seeing the changes in the progress that he's made if you look at the starting rotation and you say, oh, they none of them made adjustments after their second starts, and then you look at how they handled Coors Field, and you're not watching it then. You're mad, Rockies fans. I know you're mad. I know you're upset. I know you're frustrated. Watching the Rockies is a frustrating experience, and we will continue to highlight and talk about the frustrations of the Colorado Rockies, but it's not at the cost and at the expense of completely eliminating any sort of positive thread about the Rockies. Be frustrated. Vocalize your anger, certainly. 
But at the end of the day, you have to, you, you really do need to watch the team with, uh, you have to put some perspective onto this. Call out the things you don't like. Call out the issues. Absolutely. But it's a comment about cutting half the team. That, that doesn't fix the Rockies problems. That doesn't address any of the issues. That doesn't have a backup plan. That doesn't address any of the thoughts of the physical stuff. Actually, look, in, just, just break it down. Think about that type of stuff. It's more complicated than you think. It's not so easy as just snap a finger, cut half the roster, and the Rockies are going to be back at 500 baseball. It, it doesn't work that way. And continuing to spin these crazy ideas of how the Rockies are going to get back into get back to relevancy through cutting all these players and just uh, immediately waving wands to make things magically happen isn't the case. It's going to take a long time. And spoiler alert, Rockies fans, I, 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 I and I don't think this is going to be that crazy. Dick Momford isn't selling the team anytime soon. You can think what you want about the about the attendance. You can see what the the the, the fact that the Rockies played in front of the lowest home crowd since I think it was in ten years on Wednesday's game. Those messages are going to be heard. But at the same time, if you have an owner that already doesn't sp like to spend a lot of money on big contracts loses money from the TV deal, loses money in attendance, do you think Dick Momford is going to spend more money as a result of that? Le legit question. Because he ain't selling anytime soon. There's no incentive for Dick Momford to sell. Even if he has the low attendance. Because I'm not buying into any attendance narratives until June. Until it's warm, until school's out, until we, it, we, we've seen this before. They set the new record by like 200, 200 people. They had a fewer than than the Pirates game last year, not counting pandemic stuff too. If this stuff is hap happening in the middle of the season, that's a different story. That means that there's momentum here uh, in terms of people really being that fed up with the product. But you're, you, you, when you build up this idea that you can't have any smidgen of positive thoughts about the Rockies is miserable. It's mis it's that's miserable fan existence. Yes, the Rockies have played at the rate of one of the worst teams in baseball. Arguably, the Rockies have one of the first, the worst front offices in all of baseball. But to sit there and say that that that, that they can't turn around or that there isn't time in the season to correct this, if to sit there and to say there aren't signs of encouragement, even in the struggling players, you're missing the point. You're just being fanatical. The Rockies suck. There, here it is. There, there is me here. The Rockies suck. But just by freaking out and immediately calling for all this, this boom, 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 three weeks into the season without letting these guys one of which has a history of heating up in the second as after the first month of the season and another guy who's only getting his second full time in or second full season as a starter you can be upset be frustrated be pissed <laughs> pissed off at the Colorado Rockies as a fan and you can point out the numerous issues with this team and their performance this year but there's also things that you have to sit there and 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 say this Rockies team already has made improvements versus the first week of the season. There is an argument to be made. They didn't get it done. And that's the, at, at the end of the day, one of the biggest issues, the Rockies can't get the fundamentals down. And if the Rockies played fundamental baseball and were able to do what they believe they are capable of doing, this team could have had back-to-back -back series wins. But what I will echo though, of the frustration of the fans is, I can't keep saying, if the Rockies do this, then they'll do this. It has to eventually start becoming, the Rockies did this, and this is the result. The Rockies have to back up the, the possibilities, the potential that the team shows, and they haven't done that. And, they, and, and, and especially key players have not done that so far this season. But you can't deny the fact that it is April 11th. The baseball season, even with the Rockies, goes on until October. There is still time for this team, and there are still things to sit there and, and, and be positive about 
But realistically, until I, I got on, on my tangent there to start this episode, until this team starts doing the little things correctly, they will continue to lose. They will continue to be frustrating. They will continue to be subpar in the eyes of not only the division, but the rest of the MLB. I said the MLB again, my bad. The point is your frustrations, your anger as Rockies fans is reasonable and grounded in disappointing production. But going totally fanatical and completely burning bridges on every single last thing doesn't give this team any opportunity to show you about changing, about adapting, about getting better, about making adjustments. And baseball is a game of making adjustments. And there is one adjustment that this bullpen has to start making because it is inexcusable for the Rockies to continue to walk batters at this rate. If you are looking at, I think, the biggest issue with the Colorado Rockies in 2024, walking batters. And I'll uh, I'll give you an example of why it's so bad and why it can lead to such bad results when you compare it to the other two teams that are in the Rockies' wheelhouse when it comes to walks and where how they've started the season. Uh, we'll dive into that coming up into in segment number two. Before we do that, though, we got to talk about our friends at Policy Genius. Policy Genius it helps you navigate the really complicated world of insurance. I know it might be intimidating. I know you might be wondering, how do I get started? Well, Policy Genius is the country's leading online insurance marketplace. It saves you time and money so you can provide your family with a financial safety net starting today. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for $1 million of coverage. Some options offer same-day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. You can talk to an award-winning team of agents who will help walk you through the process step-by-step -step and easily compare quotes from American his top insurers just in a few clicks to help you lower your price. Check life insurance off your to-do list in no time with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com slash locked on MLB or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com slash locked on MLB. We're also brought to you by our friends at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. This is the Locked on Rockies podcast for free and streaming on your favorite streaming services, bringing you your daily Colorado Rockies talk right here on the Locked on Podcast Network, where you can find your team every day. Rockies fans, you can join us on the Locked on Rockies YouTube channel where you're firing off your Rockies hot takes. That's what we do. You know, in that whole first segment, we're talking, getting our fan reactions. We're venting how we're feeling trying to be positive, but also trying to be realistic about the frustrating issue that this team is easily one of the most frustrating uh, teams out there to root for. And uh, if you want to be part of the conversation, I mean, and it, it wasn't just Rackadori. We got Colm Callum. We got Cassidy Dean. We got TK. We got Mile High. Uh, we got our buddy uh, Mile High. Uh, let's see. I was, it, it changes the names on me here. Let me get the, there we go. Let me get these names here. Uh, we got Mile High Me uh, Mez there. We got Clipper Sim, uh, Sim Pilot. We got all sorts of people joining us in the Locked On Rockies YouTube comment section. So talk with your Rockies fans and, and, and let me know. I mean, I, I love hearing from y'all. I really, really do. The number one thing that we, that, that this team, the biggest flaw, I, I, I think, I mean, you can look at a lot of things. Walking batters, man. Oh, my goodness. Losing that game in the way they did yesterday is incredibly frustrating, but that's what happens. I mean, literally, that is the definition of what happens, especially when you're playing 
good teams, good playoff teams. And I know the Diamondbacks were, 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 were on the skid. I know the Diamondbacks haven't beat another team other than the Rockies this year. But good teams take advantage of the opportunities that they're given. And when the Rockies themselves are giving multiple opportunities in the game in free passes, that's a huge problem. It's a massive problem. You can't go into the top of the ninth in a, 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 a tie ball game. And what and what do you do? Walk batters, back to back batters. I mean, it's it's, it's inexplicable, inexplicable, and and it, it wastes another solid start from Rocky starters. Austin Gomber, six innings, two earned, six hits, four strikeouts, but he got he lets up the walks. The Diamondbacks punished the walks throughout the series, and that's why they won. The Diamondbacks overall played crappy baseball in that series two errors in the finale there uh and the rockies still having a chance in that in that three to two loss but what happens late in the ball game you can't have walks from your bullpen you can't have your bullpen responsible for four walks in two innings late innings in a close ball game until the rockies hit their spots they will lose games they're going to lose these close games because when you give teams Free opportunities like walks, like they were in, and in the first series in Arizona when the defense wasn't that good, they will take advantage of it. The Rockies took advantage of some of the issues that these teams did, but not enough. They were given moments to put these to put the Diamondbacks away, put the Rays away, but they one didn't capitalize on offense, and then two they allowed their opponents free passes. Consider the start the Rockies have had. One of the worst starts in all of baseball, right? They have one of the lowest win totals in all of baseball. I believe they have the, I believe they are second. Let's see. They are third from the bottom in terms of wins right now. White Sox, Marlins below at two wins. Athletics, Twins, Astros above them at four wins. And, and I'm, I want to highlight something here. Who are these teams close to in this category? The Marlins lead the league in walks at 71. They've had the worst start to the season and their worst start to the season, arguably ever. Coming in at number two, 64 walks. The Colorado Rockies, number three at 64 walks, or at, at number three at 63 walks, the Houston Astros. The top three teams in walks this year are, are the or some are playing the worst baseball to start the season. Walks are incredibly costly. They are incredibly costly. And, and at least the Marlins and the Astros can take relevant or take solace in the fact that they have a hundred, they have doubled or triple digit strikeouts from their pitching staff that, so far this season. The Rockies have 89. The Rockies have only struck out 15 more batters than they have walked this season. That is an that ratio is flawed. That ratio is a massive problem. The Marlins have 36 more strikeouts than walks. The Astros have 37 more strikeouts than walk. Next up there in terms of most walks, the Padres. Let's see here. That is um, over 60 more strikeouts that they have for for that team. That's it's close to it's close to like in between 60 and 70. The Blue Jays, they have 56 more uh, strikeouts than walks. When you look at the best teams, when you look at the great teams, when you look at the elite pitchers, and when you look at the records of these teams to start the year, that is your storyline right there. Mixed in with the fact that this team doesn't strike out a lot of batters, and then it's a huge problem. Huge problem. No other team is that close when it comes to strikeout to walk ratios. Like literally, not even close. 25, that the ratio, the, the difference between the Rockies strike uh, walking and strike total is the lowest in baseball by far. And that is a huge problem. Guess what team also has the highest, uh, guess what team has the highest ERA this year? No, let's see. They don't. It doesn't want to tell me. Oh, wait. There it is. It's the Rockies at six point five seven. And I know the first game. I'm on. I am completely aware of how the first game skews things to start the season. But it, it, that there, there's your problem, I, I, or one of them. 
You're giving teams ample, ample, ample opportunities to get back in it. You're not putting anybody away. I mean, it's eye-opening to see. The Rockies have the highest ERA by 1.47. They have the highest pitching staff ERA by 1.47. Nearly a 1.5 difference in ERA versus the Rockies. Total number of strikeouts. Let's do total number of strikeouts here. Rockies, they are third from the bottom. They are, they are escaping last place in strikeouts by pitching staff by three. They have given up the highest opponent batting average of anybody. They have the highest whip out of anybody. 1.78 whip? 1.78? That's unacceptable. It's unsustainable. It's a massive issue for the Colorado Rockies. And, and, and you can pinpoint to the fact that in this homestand, it was the bullpen. The bullpen is, is gasping for air in these big clutch situations here. I want to read a tweet from uh, uh, Drew Creaseman here. And this doesn't include the walks. So there, there, there are walk issues for all these pitchers as well. But just just something to remind yourself from this homestand that what the starters did here and how the Rockies finished that homestand in terms of wins and losses. Austin Gomber, four innings pitched, two earned, seven strikeouts in that first start that he had. Feltner, six innings pitched, one earned, 10 strikeouts. Hudson, six innings pitched, three earned, four strikeouts. Freeland, five innings pitched, two earned, two strikeouts. Quantrill, six innings pitched, three earned runs, six strikeouts. And then Austin Gomber on his second there, six innings pitched, two earned runs, four strikeouts. I know it doesn't factor in the walks there. All of those pitchers in that sense, and, and I think actually only one of them uh, was the one that gets away without walking. Cal Quantrill doesn't walk uh, the any Diamondbacks, and I don't believe that Austin Gomber had two uh, there as well. So it, it goes to show you that the starters have, the starters put this team in a position to win the entire homestand. There was no massive big Kyle Freeland blow up there was nothing, there really was nothing more than late in the ball game. Rockies pitching can't hit their spots. And that will continue to be one of the worst things about this team until they turn it around. And that's when the criticisms of, 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 the, of the pitching coach and Bud Black continue to ring loud. This is supposed to be a pitching manager. And this pitching staff continues to struggle. It, it, and walking and allowing walks is one of the most frustrating and maddening things for me as a fan. I I, I despise watching the, the top of the ninth roll around and two runners are on on 10 pitches where eight of them are out of the zone. Nine of them are out of the zone. I know it's the I know you're not trying to give them pitches to hit, but you gotta hit the close spots. And the umpires. They were letting people nibble. But when you're throwing a ball way into the other side of the zone, when you're not consistently hitting your spots, you're not going to get those calls. Easily, the biggest concern with this Rockies team is the walks. And it's followed up by the vet some key players continuing to struggle. And that is something that we that is just really impacting the Rockies as a whole as well. Let's talk about that coming up in segment number three. Before we do that, though, got to tell you about some of the folks that help make this show possible, and that includes FanDuel. FanDuel is America's number one sports book, and it's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball, well, it's in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. That's right. Get your Nuggets, get your Avalanche, get your Rockies betting action all done at FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, bucks, win or lose. That's all you got to do. Just place a $5 money line bet or something like that, and you can get $100 in bonus bets. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Locked on Rockies podcast here, wrapping things up on a fired up Thursday edition here. I mean, I, 
there's stuff that you can enjoy. Man, missing out on back-to-back -back series wins, that's the difference maker. We'll know the Rockies are in a better spot when they're winning these series, when they're winning these games, because that's the difference maker right there. The good teams, the playoff teams, the, the, the best teams in the business, they take advantage of their situations. They make the adjustments, and they get better. And man, oh man, does K uh, Chris Bryant, Brendan Rodgers, and Nolan Jones need to make adjustments. This team, uh, one of the biggest things that we're seeing is the these guys striking out at the rate that they are. I mean, Nolan Jones almost had the sombrero yesterday. Chris Bryant has basically had almost every single at-bat be an 0-2 at, uh, 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 at-bat. The Rockies are the are fifth in all of baseball with a, or striking out 125 times while only walking 39. It's a massive problem. And and these two and those three guys are are the key parts of why this this piece ain't going to work if if the, this puzzle ain't going to work if those pieces don't start fitting. I'm giving Nolan Jones time. He's young. He's figuring out this historically slow start here in the beginning of the year, just like Brendan Rodgers. I mean, Brendan Rodgers does get on a couple of times, but the Chris Bryant concerns, that's the one where we're really hoping for the biggest turnaround because this team just can't afford these three guys to come up and strike out in key situations. We, we can't have the heart of the order. That's another thing too. Chris Bryant cannot be batting in the middle of the lineup anymore. It doesn't matter how much you trust him, how much you believe in him and all that stuff. Until he gets going, he's got to be batting sixth. Got to be batting sixth. I, you need to put, I mean, there's an argument that Chris Bryant shouldn't be on the field right now. Michael Tolia is hitting home runs from both sides of the plate. Like, you you have to you have to give them the time to adjust certainly you have to give them the benefit of the doubt beginning of the season yada 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 but you also got to put the pressure on i mean the pressure needs to be on chris bryant to perform because we can't have michael tolia come up and hit big home runs to dead center field and then not make his way back into the lineup because we got to get chris bryant going if his back is hurting let's get the back figured out Let's let's have him sit for three days. I mean, we all as Rockies fans kind of understood that that 160, 150, 140 games from Chris Bryant ain't going to happen. So instead of having him play through potentially if, if his back is is up, if he's not seeing if it's this, if it's that you got to work with this guy. Because he's looking lost up there. And the Rockies can't be having this complete underproduction of Chris Bryant. Brendan Rodgers and Nolan Jones. Why weren't the Rockies able to capitalize on some of the opportunities they were given? It's because the heart of their order has four guys batting sub 200. They need this core. They need these guys to be the offensive threats they can be. They need, and, and they need to take better at bats. I mean, Chris Bryant's got to work on that vision. He is not seeing the ball well at all. And Nolan Jones, I'll at least say, dude got a little unlucky. I think, you know, there are a lot of his strikeouts over this series that too close to take. I get that, but the umpires didn't do Nolan Jones a ton of favors. But just like with this walking situation, until these guys get going, until these guys stop striking out in critical, crucial situations for the Colorado Rockies, they're going to lose ball games. Plain and simple. These, these two issues with the Rockies, they're, the amount of striking out that they do as a team mixed with the amount of walks that they allow, it's a it's an oil and water combo. When you're striking out at the rate that you do, you're not capitalizing on the fact uh, uh, that on your 107 hits. When you go down on strikes 125 times, you're not capitalizing on, on, on the fact that you have 20 doubles on the season. There are multiple instances, especially in that series against Arizona, where they had two, they had errors. There were that you got Merrill Kelly to walk. You have opportunities. These guys have to start. I mean, it, it, once the, the corner will turn for the Rockies when these guys start turning the corner because they're all far too or, or significant to the Rockies' offense to go out the way that they're going out. And my concern level for Chris Bryant is only going to grow as the games go on until the, the the streak is snapped. Brendan Rodgers and Nolan Jones, I know, especially Brendan Rodgers, I know about his history in starting the season and, and what he's capable of doing.
But those three guys are far too important for this Rockies roster to be performing at the rate that they are. The Rockies need these guys. You saw it in the game last night. Nolan Jones, bases loaded, games on the line. Can't be going down the way you did like that. Really, you know, stuff to enjoy from the homestand, certainly. But there's an, there's a reason why the fans are fired up. There's a reason why people are disappointed. There's a reason why this team keeps losing games, and it's because they are struggling at some of the most fundamental and important fundamental aspects of baseball. You got to hit your spots. You got to hit the ball. And the Rockies aren't doing enough of either of those. Folks, that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Rockies. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Locked on Rockies podcast. We'll be back in action tomorrow. Sorry for a late episode today, but, you know, the work schedule sometimes doesn't always work with you here. Appreciate you for making us your first listen of the day. You can find us free and streaming on your favorite streaming services. You can also find us on the Locked on Rockies YouTube channel where you can be part of the show. Firing off your Rockies hot takes in the Locked on Rockies comment section. Love that Locked on Rockies comment section. Keep them coming. Keep letting me know what's on your mind, Rockies fans. And until next time, why don't you go check out Locked on MLB for your second listen of the day or Locked on Broncos, Locked on Avalanche, Locked on Nuggets, and Locked on Buffs. Got you covered for your Colorado sports coverage. Until next time, I'm Paul Holden saying so long from the Locked on Rockies podcast.